Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to CEC Live Lecture. Dear friends, today in our series on disaster management, we are going to talk on volcanic disasters. We are going to discuss in detail what volcanic disaster is. Friends, for this discussion, we have once again with us in our studios, Dr. B.W. Pandey. Dr. B.W. Pandey is Associate Professor in Department of Geography, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. Dr. Pandey has immense knowledge and experience and he has contributed a lot in the area of academics. Uh, various uh, of his research papers uh, are uh, admired as well as studied by the research scholars uh, and number of uh, the research scholars uh, are also pursuing uh, their further studies under him. He has uh, contributed to uh, various uh, national and international journals too. Dear friends, if you want to ask questions from Dr. B.W. Pandey on volcanic disaster, then you can call us in the studio. You can contact us through our toll-free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat, our number is 1-800-110-430. So friends, let's welcome our guest, Dr. B.W. Pandey, and uh, let's carry forward today's lecture. Hello, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Lecture. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, friends. Today we are going to discuss about volcanic disaster, and the framework of the discussion will be the kind of volcanoes, type of volcanoes, the, the nature of the volcanoes, the spatial distribution of the volcanoes. Then we'll discuss the negative impact of volcanoes and positive impact of volcanoes and finally we'll discuss the volcanic disaster management so friends first of all you know the volcano so what is a volcano volcano is a kind of vent fissure a hole from where molten materials solid materials gases erupt out from the interior of the earth. Mostly volcanic eruptions, no doubt it is caused by magma, magma in the chamber. And when the molten material is magma in the chamber and when it comes out to the pipe, to the vent, then it is called lava. So when lava comes to the closer to the crust of the earth, a few kilometers below the crust, inside the crust, there are very deep level underground water. Underground water are different types. The water as a resource which we utilize as a ground water by discharging through the hand pumps, through the tube wells and the wells. Those waters are meteoric water. That water which percolates through the seepage moves to the underground. These are all come from the rainfall. Therefore, it is called as meteoric water and that is a water resource, underground water resource. But below this, at very deep level, when magma moves up, the plutonic water, which is very deep, which generally we are not able to utilize through the two wells and the hand pumps. So that water comes with the contact of lava. And because of that heat of the lava, that water converts into vapor. And when it converts, water converts to vapor, then with the force of the vapor, power of the vapor, it blasts the crust of the earth and there is an eruption. So volcanic eruption mainly caused by the force, the power of the gas. That is mainly water vapor. So volcanoes can be different kinds and during the eruption, before the eruption, 
and post eruption there are so many stages which requires management we'll discuss this later on so this is a vent of the volcano when volcanic material comes out it comes to the pipe it is called vent volcano have three important components cone crater and pipe so there is a vent crater then pipe and then cone these are the three components of a volcano and in the in interior part inside you find magma chamber when this magma chamber how flow lava moves up and come with the contact of the water vapor it causes eruption there are many reasons behind the volcanic eruptions number 1 is subduction when plates along the convergence boundaries that we have discussed in the plate tectonics along the convergence plate boundaries there is a the heavy plate is subducted below the light plate due to subduction there is a rubbing rubbing over the crustal material due to rubbing the crustal material melt down and form lava then that lava comes up through the vent to the pipe and causes volcanic eruption in the spatial distribution of the uh, volcanoes you will see that most of the active volcanoes are found along the convergence plate boundaries these convergence plate boundaries are maximum largely occur in pacific ocean all along the pacific coast that popularly known as ring of fire there are millions of the volcanoes around the pacific ocean which is called ring of fire and the fire griddle of the pacific it form a circum pacific nature so known as circum pacific belt in the seismic zone we had discussed it we we'll discussed today again in the volcanic realm a spatial distribution of the volcano so maximum eruptive volcanoes explosive volcanoes are found along the subduction zone along the subduction of the two plate margin along the convergence plate margins second type of volcanoes found along the divergence plate divergence plate it takes place between the two tectonic plates moving away from each other means diverging from each other along the divergence through the fissure a long chain of the ridge develops through the fissure and you know in mid atlantic the eurasian plate african plate moving towards east and the north america south america plate moving towards west so there there is there is divergence and all along the divergence right from north atlantic to south atlantic more than 14400 km long there is a ridge that ridge is volcanic ridge that ridge is volcanic ridge and that is called dolphin ridge in the north and the challenger ridge in the south mid atlantic ridge similarly you find along the eastern margin of pacific ocean there is a divergence plate between the pacific plate and its sub plate called nazca plate in the east pacific there is over more than 12000 km long rise 
rigs and rise that is called East Pacific Rise. I will show you in the map in the discussion. So Mid-Atlantic Ridge, East Pacific Rise and in Indian Ocean, in Indian Ocean there is opposite to the Y alphabet, opposite to the Y alphabet you find the ridge because the Indo-Australian plate moving towards northeast, African plate moving towards northwest, departing from Antarctica plate. So along the Antarctica and Indo-Australian plate and, in, and between Antarctica and African plate, there is a big size of ridge, somewhere more than 10,000 kilometer. These divergence plate form fissure volcano and divergence create volcanic eruption. So convergence plate boundaries have explosive volcanoes, divergence plate boundaries have fissure eruption and third type of volcanoes called hot spots. This can be found anywhere on the crust at the weak thin area when the middle of the plates it comes out like you find the volcanoes in Africa continent. Within the Africa continent there is volcanoes Kilimanjaro, Pupu, Kilimanjaro, all these volcanoes in the middle. So mainly the causes of volcanic eruptions or the plate tectonics due to subduction plate, due to divergence plate and intermediate hot spots. When we see the size and the shape of the volcanoes, the volcanoes can be divided on the basis of size and the basis of shape. On the basis of the cone and on the basis of the volcanic eruption, erupted materials. We talk about the cone, there are, there are mainly five types of the volcanoes, sealed volcanoes, cinder volcanoes having cinder cone, composite volcano, caldera volcano and fissure volcanoes. Sealed, sealed when it develops like a shield. Sealed volcanoes can span across hundreds of the miles and they can be huge vertically that they can reach the clouds of the earth very easy. Sealed volcanoes have a slow slope and consist of frozen lava after it is hardened. Sealed volcanoes almost always have large craters at their summit big size of craters called sealed volcanoes, cinder cone volcanoes, cinder cone volcanoes consist of mostly loose grainy cinders and have very little or no lava, less lava. Cinder cone volcanoes are normally small about a mile span and about 1000 feet vertically. Cinder cone volcanoes have fairly steep slope because the loose material piled up one over the other and form the steep slope and normally have a small crater on the top because the crater with the volcanic materials, loose materials, solid materials, it filled up and the crater becomes small and the cone become more or less vertical steep slope. This kind of volcanic cone called cinder cone volcanoes. Then composite cone volcanoes. Composite cone volcanoes have another name called strato volcanoes. Composite volcanoes consist of lava that is mixed with sand and gravel which in turn creates cinders or volcanic ash. In Africa continent you find the composite volcanoes. 
Lake, find the Victoria, Kyoga. There are so many volcanic lakes together. They form big size of several hundred thousand square kilometers, the size of the volcanoes, because so many volcanoes compose it. A composite volcano. Then you find caldera volcanoes. Caldera volcanoes are circular depressions in the ground over a magma chamber. Sometimes the depression in caldera volcanoes are covered in with lava and volcanic ash, making it hard to recognize. This type of volcano is considered either easier noticed from space due to the distance and viewpoint. When this volcano erupts, it can spew volcanic rocks for miles and the miles. Caldera volcanoes are very large in size and when the crater is filled up with water, it forms a caldera lake. Friends, the largest caldera lake in the world is Lake Victoria, that is the source of origin of River Nile, Lake Victoria, and Lake Kyoga. From there, because Lake Victoria lies exactly on the equator, so there is equatorial rainfall, so large amount of water comes to the Lake Victoria from where it feeds River Nile. Then, Fissure volcanoes that they have, I have discussed, fissure volcanoes are also hard to recognize from the ground and sometimes from space. Fissure volcanoes have no main crater. The ground just splits and lava pours out through the cracks. After a fissure volcano erupts and has cooled because it is a solid, it will look mainly like a plain. So, the Fischer volcano, the best example is the Iceland. Iceland volcanoes are mostly Fischer volcanoes. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge or the Fischer volcanoes. Then, the second type of the description of the volcanoes on the basis of erupted material, its height, shape of the erupted material. So there are largely all, whatever the millions of the volcanoes are found in the world, all those volcanoes can be grouped into major six categories. Number one, Iceland type. Number two, Hawaiian type. Number three, Vulcanian type. Number four, Vesuvius type. Number five, a Stromboli type. And number six, is the Pelian type. Iceland type. Iceland type volcanoes found mainly along the fissure, along the divergence plate boundary, where so many volcanoes, Lepari, and Hekla on the Iceland. These are found along the mid-Atlantic ridge. So it comes out because of the space, enough space, it is spread out. Coming out from the fissure, it is spread out. And because it is in the bottom of the ocean, low temperature, due to low temperature, it cool down immediately, it form like a ridge, mid-Atlantic ridge. So many volcanoes found along the mid-Atlantic ridge, called Iceland type. Number two, Hawaiian type. So Iceland type, it form a table shape, and Hawaiian type form a very gentle cone, very gentle cone say about 5 to 10 degree angle. The lava cone, the volcanic cone is very gentle slope. So mostly this kind of 
volcanoes found in the Pacific Ocean, mainly in and around the Hawaiian island. So it is known as Hawaiian type of volcano. Number third, Vulcanian type. Vulcanian type. It, it is mainly found along the convergence plate boundaries or intraplate boundary. It is found on the, on the interior of the plates. Vulcanian type of volcano, when it erupts, its volcanic materials like dust, ash, water vapor moves up in the air up to a few kilometer and it forms a small circle in the air. It is called Vulcanian type. It means the ch lava chamber is not much deep. It comes out with little water vapor, little material and it erupts and it goes up to few kilometer and is spread out with a small circle. It is called Vulcanian type. Then Vesuvius type. Vesuvius type volcano having deeper magma chamber, more plutonic water and large amount of gas, large amount of volcanic materials. And that materials comes out from the vent and moves vertically over several kilometers and found a big size of the circle in the atmosphere. It covers several kilometer areas in the atmosphere. It's called Vesuvius type. Mostly, most of the volcanoes in Mediterranean Sea are generally Vesuvius type. It's the name derived from Vesuvius volcano in the Mediterranean Sea. Then the fifth category is Stromboli. A Stromboli type of volcano having very, very narrow vent, narrow vent and lot of lava, volcanic materials, dust, ash and water vapor. All these volcanic materials comes out to the small vent, minor vent and because of less space in the vent and more pressure from inside, it moves up to several kilometer in the atmosphere, goes more than 10, 20 kilometer in the atmosphere, very high. The volcanic materials erupted to the very high altitude, it is moving straight in the upper part of troposphere. Therefore, it is known as lighthouse. Wherever a Stromboli type of volcanoes are found, it gives a direction to the navigation. Before the invention of GPS, before the invention of scientific tools, direction, GPS, these Stromboli type of volcanoes were a direction indicator. Therefore, Stromboli lies in Mediterranean Sea. So Stromboli popularly known as lighthouse of the Mediterranean. Friends, wherever either in the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean, mostly in the Pacific Ocean and in the Mediterranean Sea, even in the Indian Ocean, there are Stromboli type of volcano which help in the navigation. It is called lighthouse. So Stromboli, lighthouse of the Mediterranean. And finally, come to the Pelion type, number six. Pelion type of volcano erupts 
more magma along with the water vapor dust particles and the 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 cracks of the rocks large amount of dust particles water vapor and along with along with magma lava it comes out and pillian type of volcanoes are mainly found in the ocean along the islands like in the caribbean islands greater antilles little antilles in indonesian archipelago kuril islands elusian islands there are big size of volcanic eruption and because of the speed of the wind whatever materials comes out to the vent it blown away in single direction so it comes out over several kilometer the sky is red lava falling from the sky the fissures the cracks the particles of the rocks falling from the sky so it is mainly found in the pili island in the pilian type in the caribbean sea so the name derived as pili pili is mythologically is a name of the goddess and it is a symbol of destruction it is symbol of the open hair and it the fire coming from the hair so the pili when pilian volcano erupts due to eruption of pilian volcano lot of lava dust particles moves in the air and blown away in the one direction single direction mono direction so with the appearance like goddess pili it is popularly known as pilian type of volcanoes friends all the volcanoes in the world whether it is the pacific ocean atlantic ocean indian ocean or in the mediterranean sea or over above the continents so whatever wherever the volcanoes are found all these volcanoes can be divided into these six type of volcanoes friends these are the volcanic uh, eruptions and i find that there are major volcanic incidents as a history we'll discuss that detail about the distribution of the volcanoes history of the volcanoes like uh, the tambora indonesia find mount merapi in indonesia you find krakatoa in indonesia mount pili in martinic island ruse in colombia anjen in japan laki in the iceland cute in indonesia gulungung in indonesia vesuvius in italy there are several times eruption has taken place in the mediterranean sea these these volcanoes these volcanoes are the major cause of the destruction it it have a positive impact it has a negative impact and all that friends the types of volcanoes and causes of volcanoes we have discussed any question regarding the types shape and size of the volcanoes you are most welcome i'll be happy to reply your question thank you very much
you friends good afternoon in the volcanic uh, disaster we have discussed the nature of volcanoes type of volcanoes materials of the volcanoes components of the volcanoes and now very interesting topic is the distribution of the volcanoes distribution of the volcanoes you can see through the map most of the volcanoes are found along the plate boundaries either convergence plate boundaries or divergence plate boundary friends regarding convergence plate boundaries you see throughout the pacific coast throughout the pacific coast there are convergence boundaries convergence boundary between the south america plate and the nazca plate cocos plate then juan de fuca plate north america plate then you find the the pacific plate with the eurasian plate pacific plate with the indo australian plate all around the pacific ocean this is popularly known as ring of fire there are thousands and thousands of the volcanoes found along the circum pacific belt this is the most active volcanic belt in the world it begins from antarctica continent passing through south america along the convergence boundary of nazca and south america plate there are convergence plate boundary and there are thousands and thousands of volcanoes along the andes mountain mount ojes del salado mount akankagua titicaca there are hundreds of the thousands of the volcanoes along the andes mountain passing through the andes then it enters in north america passing through these tumus countries like panama to the mexico and then enter usa to canada along the rocky mountain sierra nevada mountain coast range mountain alaska mountain there are thousands of the volcanoes mount rainer mount hood mount sasta mount seven sister mount mckinley these are very famous volcanic names found along the north america west coast in the rocky mountain and the coastal mountains then passing through the alaskan range in alaska it enters in the pacific through the elusian archipelago elusian islands several hundred volcanoes in the elusian islands passing from elusian islands then it moves to the from east pacific to west pacific along the west pacific passing through kamchatka peninsula kuril island it enters in japan right from kuril to japan thousands of the volcanic islands in japan entire japan is volcanic islands chain of the volcanoes and i repeat it the chain of volcanoes known as the it the dead volcanoes or the volcanic islands altogether when it, when it form in a particular chain the chain of volcanoes known as archipelago archipelago and when archipelago is the arc shape found along the coast arc shape 
known as festoon. So Japan is one of the best example of the festoon in the world. Passing through Japan, four major islands, Hokkaido, Hansu, Shikoku and Kyushu, there are thousands of the chain of the islands in southern part of Japan that is called Rukyu, chain of the Rukyu archipelago that is spread out up to Taiwan. From Rukyu, it formed the chain in Philippines. Philippines, Mount Mayan, find the three or four active volcanoes still in Philippines range. Passing through Philippines, it enters the archipelago of the West Pacific, where it forms Malinasian archipelago, Malinasian islands. Almost all the Malinasian islands are volcanic islands. Papua New Guinea, Fiji, all together. Passing through Malinasian, it enters in New Zealand. In New Zealand, Mount Cook, the highest peak of New Zealand, is volcanic peak, Mount Cook. So North New Zealand, South New Zealand. This form a complete ring called Ring of Fires. Pacific Fire Griddle, Circum Pacific Belt. Second volcanic belt is in the Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic along the divergence plate boundary between Eurasian plate and North American plate, between African plate and the South American plate. See there is a chain of the volcanoes along the Mid-Atlantic ridge. This Mid-Atlantic ridge beginning from Hekla and Lepari on Iceland, passing through the Canary, St. Helena, it moves to the southern part of Atlantic Ocean, from North Atlantic to South Atlantic. In the North Atlantic, the Mid-Atlantic volcanic realm divides, divides in two parts. One part that enters in West Atlantic in the Caribbean Sea. There you find the Martinique Islands, Cuba, Haiti, Pili type of volcano. And the another sub branch that enters in Mediterranean Sea. That in the Mediterranean Sea there are Vesuvius, Naples, Stromboli volcanoes in Mediterranean Sea. Third volcanic realm on the continents, beginning from continental belt. It begins from the East Africa along the rift and volcanoes or the feature of the eastern part of Africa. There you find the Lake Tanganyika, Nyasa, Malawi, Rudolf. These lakes are rift valley lakes. And all along the rift valleys, there are chain of the mountain. Chain of the mountain. And largest caldera mountain can find the Kilimanjaro. 
Then from Kilimanjaro it moves towards north, passing through the Kenya, Ethiopia, Lake Tana. Lake Tana. And passing through the Tana along with along with the Red Sea. It enters in Sinai Peninsula. In the Sinai Peninsula, that's in, in Egypt, Sinai Peninsula, between the Suez, Gulf of Suez and Gulf of Aqaba, there is Sinai Peninsula, Red Sea, Gulf of Suez, Gulf of Aqaba, Sinai Peninsula. In the Sinai Peninsula, there's Mount Catherine. It's a volcanic peak. Passing through the Mount Catherine, it enters in Turkey, Anatolia. There are a number of volcanic peaks in Turkey, Anatolia. The Anatolian knot, Mount Ararat. Then from Anatolia, Turkey, it enters in Iran. In Iran, along the Caspian coast, they find the highest peak of Iran. It's a volcanic peak. Passing through Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, it enters in the Himalayan system. From Hindukus to Himalaya. All along the Himalaya, because Himalayan zone have convergence, continental boundaries. Convergence of continental plate with continental plate. Therefore, the roots of the continents are very deep. That is the law, principle of the isostasy. Continental plates have deeper roots because continental plates are made of light materials. An oceanic plate are less root. An oceanic plate are made of heavy materials. So to make the isostasy balance Continental plate have very deep roots. Therefore, whatever the volcanic materials, lava, comes out, it's not able to form a vent, a crater, is not able to come out. It's not extruding. It all becomes intrusive. There is no... Ex the Exclusive volcanoes. They are all intrusive volcanoes along the Himalaya. There are a lot of lava deposits inside the Himalaya. It is not able to come extrusive. Therefore, wherever there are continental plate converging with continental plate, you will not find you will not find extrusive volcanoes. There will be all intrusive volcanoes. Through Himalaya, it's come to Arakanyoma, and after Arakanyoma, it enters in Bay of Bengal. There again it becomes extrusive volcanoes along the Andaman Nicobar Islands. Along the Andaman Nicobar Islands, there are so many active volcanoes. Dormant volcanoes, dead volcanoes. And the passing through Andaman Nicobar, then it enters in Sumatra, Java, Borneo, and join the Ring of Fire, Circumpacific Belt. Friends, these are three major volcanic realms in the world. So, maximum number found along the circumpacific belt, a ring of fire, that is convergence plate boundaries. Number two, mid-Atlantic volcanic realm. Number three, 
mid continental volcanic realm so these three volcanic realms are major volcanic realms in the world then the major impacts of the volcanoes this could be up to some extent maybe positive impact but largely it has negative impact positive impacts few points i would like to share with you positive impacts like volcanic ash volcanic ash contains some minerals that help formation of fertile soil plants that grow up from the place of eruption over several 100000 km distance large amount of very fine particles volcanic particles materials get deposited it helps growing the plants in agriculture fertile soil second point you can add that volcanic eruptions produce copper sulfur and nickel from the volcanic eruption there are large deposits of the copper sulfur and nickel then you find volcanic gases volcanic gases are the source of vitamins to the soil it makes soil fertile friends these are few positive impact of the volcanoes but mostly volcanoes have negative impact volcanic eruptions cause earthquake the major disaster along with the volcano is earthquake so earthquake always associated with the volcanic eruption now i'd like to explain here whenever there is a volcanic eruption its consequences are the origin of the earthquake seismic waves because whenever there is eruptive volcanoes as i told you eruption among the volcanoes not caused by lava it is caused by water vapor so due to the heat temperature of the lava water vapor, water converts to vapor and form the pressure due to that pressure the crust is blown away like the krakatoa very massive volcano due to eruption of volcanoes there are massive earthquake so crust is blown away and gives seismic origin <coughs> sorry due to due to volcanic eruption there is fast floods mid the mud slides and the rock falls floods because large amount of water vapor comes out it create the floods mud slides whatever the particles of the rocks moves up when it formed with the mixed with the vapor it form mud and comes back to the ground there are mud slides and the rock fall lava can travel very far and burn bury or damage anything in its path including people houses and trees that's why the areas where there is volcanic eruption it's no man's land people move out the large amount of dust and ash can cause roofs to fall so the tin said houses earthen houses hatches houses the large amount of 
the sediments get deposited, dust and ash get deposited, and it collapsed. Makes it hard to breathe. Lot of respiratory diseases. Very hard to breathe and is normally very smelly because of gas. The ground around the volcano is not secure and can cause big earthquakes. So the volcanoes have been more and more negative impact than a little positive impact. Regarding volcanic disaster management, friends, the eruption of volcanoes cannot be avoided. There is no as such technique that we can check the volcanic eruption. Because of the temperature, temperature of lava is more than 1000 degrees Celsius, even more, 2000 degrees Celsius, 1000 degrees Celsius. So whatever crustal materials, any metals, all that comes with the contact of the lava, it melts down. It can't be stopped. So disaster induced by volcanic eruptions are frequent in geologically active areas of the world. Such disasters are caused by various events such as volcanic cinder falls, ash falls, pyroclastic falls, lava flows, volcanic mud flows, debris flows and debris avalanches. When the debris get accumulated one over the other, piles up one over the other up several kilometers, more than thousand meters, so it moves out it's with the speed downward, it forms debris avalanche. Debris avalanches. And even when the volcano is dormant, there is a debris deposit over a kilometer of the cone. And there is a second eruption. Due to second eruption, there is, there is earthquake. And all the debris moves downward with the speed. That is known as debris avalanche. They have a tremendous impact on people's lives if the scale is large. In particular, large-scale volcanic mud flows or debris flows, which are generally triggered by rainfall on deposited volcanic ash, affect wide areas for a long time. Friends, above the Andes mountain, where there are large number of volcanoes, find people have migrated. Sudden earthquake, uneasy breathing, respiratory diseases, there are so many factors which influence the normal life. Generally, the volcanic disaster management can be categorized in three subparts. Number one, Pre-eruption management strategies. Pre-eruption management strategies include installation of early warning system like tilt meter, which gives information about when new materials enter in the magma chamber. Friends, this technique can predict the eruption of volcano. It cannot prevent the eruption of volcanoes. So eruption will be there, but due to early warning system, due to in time prediction, the lives and properties can be saved. Life can be saved. Houses in eruption prone areas should be constructed in a manner which will allow closing all vents. The Volcanic areas, the nature of the houses where people can easily escape out and GIS based hazard donation and disaster risk mapping should be done. 
This is most effective new techniques. Geographical information system based hazard zonation. Hazard zonation, hazard mapping is very, very important and it can be, the costs can be taken early stage so that we can save the life of the people. And prepare a comprehensive evacuation plan. Sometimes there is all of a sudden volcanic eruption. Then the evacuation team, like disaster management authorities, disaster management army, personnels can be well prepared to evacuate the people to save the life of the people. During the eruption, during the eruption, people should stay inside during the volcanic eruption. Atmosphere is full of toxic chemicals, filter masks over mouth and nose, and goggles over eyes should be used to, to avoid the, the ill effect of the gases. Avoid being in the path of flow of the molten lava. With the help of the slope analysis, GIS model, the areas of the flowing of lava must be avoided. Avoid fume, vapors, or petrol, etc. Presence of high temperature materials in the atmosphere could cause a fire. If these fumes come in the contact with the temperature material, it gets a great loss of their lives and properties. The inlets to the houses should be covered with filters, or these inlets should be closed to prevent toxic ashes to, the, to enter in the house, to avoid the toxic materials from the volcanoes. So pre-volcanic eruption, during the volcanic eruption, now post-eruption management. Post-eruption management, one of the main issues of the post-volcano is lack of water and food. Therefore, administration should supply clean drinking water and food pockets to the victims of the volcanic eruption. This is post-volcanic management through the government and the public community. Efforts must be made to minimize the contact with the debris ashes which have been spewed by the volcanoes. Post-volcano eruption. Efforts must be to minimize the, the contact with the debris. People should be taken away from the debris. And cloths must be taken in the rinsed. Ashes must be vacuumed and the vac vacuum lint filter should be changed to save the life, to save the properties. Friends, these are the three important components of the volcanic disaster management, pre-eruption management, during eruption management, and the post-eruption management. I'll say thank you to you. If you have any question, you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Well, this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. I believe that, uh, your uh, dear friends, that you might have lots of questions. So, we are short of time over here, but if you want to uh, answer, you want your questions to be answered, then do write to us at info.cc at nic.in. We would love to solve your queries when next time Dr. B. W. Pande visits our studio. So, keep watching us, keep writing us. We would be meeting again very, very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so very much. You.